Welcome to this Lenten meditation for Wednesday, March 24th. Today is the feast day for one of the most recently canonized saints, Oscar Romero, Bishop of San Salvador. Our reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 23 through 32, comes from the appointed lessons for the feast of Saint Oscar Romero and the martyrs of San Salvador. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What made Oscar Romero a saint? For me, it is how he lived out the often elusive teaching Jesus offers us today. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. On its surface, it appears this gospel reading is assigned to St. Oscar Romero because of his martyrdom, because of the way he died. This is certainly an important part of his story. Yet, perhaps this verse refers even more to how Oscar Romero lived, how he emptied himself enough to allow God to evolve his being from, as many of his peers described him early in his vocation, an isolated, self-righteous, and self-preserving priest who defended the status quo for the elite and powerful landowners. And then he moved into the beloved, compassionate, and courageous advocate and defender for the poor and powerless campesinos, or the landless peasant farmers of El Salvador. Oscar Romero's life is often viewed viewed as an example of a great momentous conversion, similar to that of Saul being knocked to the ground by a blinding light, being renamed Paul and converting from the great persecutor of Christians into the great evangelist of the Christian way. The dismissive version of Oscar Romero's conversion is, as a young priest and bishop, clericalism and self-righteous piety was St. Romero's style. He held traditional beliefs about the role of priests in 1975, he wrote a note to priests criticizing them for being too political, adding that solving the nation's problems was by working with the government. His conversion came three weeks after he was elected archbishop when his friend, Jesuit father Rutulio Grande, who stood with peasant farmers in their aspiration to create a farmers cooperative union, was murdered in 1977 by the military. While we can all appreciate the instant, instant gratification of a quick conversion, we learn from God's creation that God is a God of patience. While there may be a big bang moment, most of our spiritual growth is a slow evolution of learning to empty ourselves of our ego, to be filled with God's love and compassion for all others and all of creation. 
the grain of wheat dies in an instant, but the new life that grows from that grain of wheat takes time and must be intentionally tended to before it bears fruit. Perhaps Oscar Romero's conversion, Oscar Romero's big bang moment, Oscar Romero's grain of wheat died when he became bishop of the small rural diocese, Santiago de Maria. He moved to Santiago de Maria after being the auxiliary bishop in San Salvador. It appears once he was removed from the insulated power structure set up in San Salvador, he began to see, hear, and experience the difficult stories of the people. During Romero's first year in Santiago de Maria, the National Guard massacred farm workers in the village of Tres Calles. After visiting the scene, Romero wrote a letter to the then president, Colonel Arturo Molina, expressing his, quote, firm protest for the way in which a security force had wrongly acted as if it had the right to mistreat and kill. St. Romero wrote, I went there to console the families that had been attacked by a squad of National Guardsmen. On the way to their homes, I stopped to pray by the body of a still unburied victim who had been shot in the head. His wife and mother were beside him, weeping. When I arrived at the house that had been invaded by the armed forces, it broke my heart to hear the bitter laments of the widows and orphans who, sobbing inconsolably, told me about the attack. Romero later visited the local National Guard commander to protest the massacre. The officer shrugged the killings off as a trivial accounting with local troublemakers and said, pointing a finger at Romero, cassocks are not bulletproof. Oscar Romero lived the atrocities alongside with the poor people of El Salvador. This led him to die to his own ambition died to his isolated piety, emptying himself and growing in the love and compassion Jesus invites all of us into. Perhaps the murder of Father Rutulio Grande was not his conversion, the moment when the grain of wheat died. Instead, it was when Oscar Romero began to bear a bounty of fruit, for seeds cannot be planted until the tree bears fruit. We know Oscar Romero bore an abundance of fruit. For even though he was murdered in cold blood while he was celebrating mass 41 years ago today, even though the powerful and wealthy uprooted his tree, believing if they could dispose of his life, it would dispose of the fruit that nourished the campesinos with hope. Yet the seeds of compassion and love that St. Oscar Romero gave in his ministry to the poor continue to bear fruit to feed and nourish people throughout the world. We conclude with the seed to plant in our own hearts, a quote from Oscar Romero, when he was asked what he meant by his call for a quote, preferential option for the poor. St. Romero said, I offer you this by way of example. A building is on fire and you're watching it burn, standing and wondering if everyone is safe. Then someone tells you that your mother and your sister in, are inside that building. Your attitude changes completely. You're frantic. Your mother and sister are burning and you do anything to rescue them, even at the cost of getting charred. That's what it means to be truly committed. If we look at poverty from the outside, as if we're looking at a fire, that's not to opt for the poor, no matter how concerned we may be. We should get inside as if our own mother and sister were burning. Indeed, it's Christ who is there and suffering. Amen.